Right, I'm just going to double quick go through the rig that I use when I'm fishing for squid from my boat. There is absolutely nothing complicated about it. This is it. It's simply like a two hook flapper made with twisted booms and I've just got your general standard squid jigs on. It takes 10 minutes to make up. It's dead simple. All I start with is I've got some 50 pound mono. In one end, tie yourself double loop. Now, it's almost symmetrical. So it didn't really matter. This could be the bottom end or it could be the top end. Take yourself about a foot and then grab another 10 inches between your fingers. Now, with one hand, twist. You see, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm rubbing the line between my fingers and twisting it up like that. And eventually what will happen is when you push it together, it will do that. Now all you've got to do is keep this hand tight and this hand twists. And there you go. That effectively is your twisted boom. Now I've still got about a foot. I've got, this is crucial. This boom here wants to be just longer than your lure. I'll explain why in a second. So a little bit longer, that'll about do. Right now, all you do is you make a loop at the top between the two lines like that, and then twist it over. Three, four. All you're doing is twisting it over itself until you end up with an eye like that and then you pass the end of your boom through the eye wet the knot pull the sides apart there you have a standoff twisted boom it's just a blood knot but with a twisted boom same again, take yourself about a foot, foot and a half, grab yourself 10 inches and start twisting. Holding this hand still, twisting with this hand. Same again, I want my boom slightly longer than what the lure is. Make a loop. Then just twist it around itself. One, two, three, four, five. Then pass the twisted boom through the eye that you've been making. Slide it all the way through, wet it, and pull down. The reason you wet it is so that your saliva lubricates the line. Otherwise, when the knot tightens up, causes friction which causes heat which damages the line there's your two booms bring yourself down about another foot snip it off and tie a double loop you want to make sure that these loops are big enough for your lead to fit through like that That is it, that's the rig. And as you'll notice, it's pretty much symmetrical. The reason that I like twisted booms is because if you can see, it's effectively a standoff boom. If that was just a normal blood knot and it was just a loop, sometimes it gets quite limp. But when it's a standoff boom like that, it stops them from tangling up. The reason that I have them that far apart is so that they won't meet in the middle and they won't tangle up and the reason that they are that far away from the bottom is because if this is the bottom where your lead is you don't want it to snag up 
and if this is the other way around if this is where the top is it's not going to tangle, tangle around your swivel now the lures that I use are just your simple generic bought online or your tackle shop they're not expensive you can pick them up from China for pennies you might have to wait six weeks for them to arrive but you can pick them up for now right they come with an eye on the end all you do is pass your loop through the eye this is why your boom needs to be slightly longer than your lure because you are going to pass the lure through the eye all you do is just pass it through like that and there it is attached if this was too short you wouldn't be able to pass it all the way through and your next one just push the loop through the eye like that pull it all the way down you see how it's a little bit longer open up the eye I'll tell you what they are sharp pass it through the loop and then pull it down and there you go right on either end doesn't matter which and I like to take my tag ends off I wouldn't leave a tag end like that on there because that is just a snagging hazard. All that happens is your line gets fast around it and it locks up. So I generally take, once I've tightened them up, I take them off pretty close. Now for attaching a lead onto the bottom, exactly the same way you attach the lures. You've got your loop, you've got your lead. All you do, pass the loop through the eye of your lead. Pass the lead through the loop. And that's it then all you'll do there is you'll just clip that to the top of your trace uh, like your what I usually have is I have my braid then a rubbing leader then a swivel I'll just clip that straight onto my swivel and then just fish away and you just fish them pattern roster style you can see there how having the twisted boom is helping the weighted lure stand off there you see that's it Dead simple and really effective. How long did that take me to make up? Five minutes? Knock them up in no time at all. We're going to try for some squid now. I can see. There's just the lures that I made up. And I'm just going to fish them. just simply on here like that just two down the exact same way that you would fish mackerel feathers but you want you want your drag to be set relatively light because cuttlefish lunge only when they get to the surface it's just like a dead weight same as octopus squid you know when you hook one of them because it will be like a lunging nodding fight my rod straight up at the back I've still got my live mackerel out that also can pick up squid but I'm looking at picking up a bass or a pollock because it's a bit of reef what I'm drifting over the little spinning rod you can see at the side there has actually got a single lure on and an extra weight I wouldn't put two lures on my spinning rod because if I've got two big squid on at the same time I'd be in a right drown and all I'm doing is just lowered it right to the bottom so I can just to say feel a bump on the bottom and then holding it about a foot off because this is snaggy ground what we're going on. Now if you have got rod rests you can sit them in rod rests and just watch the tip. But if you're gonna if you're gonna auto fish like that you really want to set them a couple of foot off the bottom because it is ground like that. The type of bite you should see was it'll just start bending over and like nodding. If I do get to show you one or two, 
what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and net them at the side of the boat and just lift them out and hold them at arm's length because they can shoot ink a hell of a distance. <laughs> if, you've ever seen, if you've ever been on a charter boat, if you've ever seen them bring one of these aboard, you see folks, they can shower 10 people in ink, 10 foot away. How the lures work, they don't actually have hooks on them, they just have these spikes. What happens is when the squid's tentacles get hold of them and pull that way, they get stuck on the spikes. So you have to keep constant tension on them. As soon as you let them go slack, they can slide that way and they can drop off. What the lures are imitating is sh uh, shrimps and prawns. Now the squids, they're living on this little bit of rock and reef area. When you start catching them, you can find that actually, if you're bringing one up, other ones will follow it to the surface. Just like that. Now I'd actually, <laughs> I'd actually lost three previous. Now look, it's dropped off the lure in the net. This is actually quite a small one. Stunning, aren't they? Oh. The colours on them are phenomenal. And those eyes are just something else. Stunning colours. Like I say, <laughs> I was losing them and I was catching them on the live bait. So I'd actually rigged a stinger hook and it still managed to pop off, but that was on the single lure. I was just hooked up on a single weighted lure like that. Dropping off that live bait. Now look, this was a live bait at one point. See how I've rigged a couple of stinger hooks on it to hope to try and hook them. They've just absolutely destroyed it. Like a pack of piranhas, aren't they? <coughs> Fortunately, I just can't get them in the net. <laughs> I'll go back for another drift. Northerly winds picked up and <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's pretty cold. Uh, tides, tides turned, sludging back in. I might be able to get on the slipway now. Um, I come out, tried for a few squid, hooked loads. Got half a dozen to the boat, got one in the boat. That's more my fault. But it just goes to show you the importance of being real quick with that net. Because there was, uh, I managed to get one. Look at this. I to get one nice squid. Look at the size of them eyes. See these, this is what it catches its prey with. The suckers on here, unbelievably strong. At the moment, he's, at the moment it's dripping ink all over the place. Look at the size of them eyes, the, cor oh, the corkers, aren't they? Aye, that'll make a cracking winter cod bait. Um, the one that I caught that on, the one that I managed to land it on was fishing just a single lure like that on my spinning rod. And on the other rod, I just had like a two lure rig. Now, uh, coincidentally, there was an awful lot of them attacking my live bait as well. My live bait was just absolutely destroyed. So there's plenty of them down there. Um, 
just <laughs> I just couldn't get him in the boat. I uh, hope this has been helpful for you. I hope what you've seen some hints and tips, and I'll catch your own squid. Hope you've enjoyed yourselves, and uh, have a nice day.